Hello everyone, welcome back to the new video. So this is a second video in the series of learning how to train a sentence embeddings model in an unsupervised fashion. So in the first part of this video, we discuss the motivation to why do you learn these representations in a supervised fashion. We then talked about one of the methods which is TSDAE, which is transformer based denoising autoencoder as an unsupervised method for learning these representation that, that uses denoising autoencoders as their base. In this video, we'll talk about the next technique, which is SimCSE, or also known as simple contrastive learning of sentence embeddings. But yeah, if you haven't watched the first video, you haven't really missed much, but I would highly recommend you to head to this timestamp to develop your understanding in terms of why do we really need unsupervised way of training these models. Cool. So let's start with a paper, which is SimCSE. So this work is from authors from Princeton and Shingo University. So let's directly jump on to what they propose. So as a part of this paper, they proposed both unsupervised and supervised way for training your sentence embeddings model. For the purpose for this video, we'll just stick to unsupervised techniques. So yeah, this is how the flow of it looks like. So the underlying idea that they propose is very simple, which is that let's say you have n number of sentences of which you form multiple batches. And let's say one of the batch and has three sentences and these are those three sentences. So from every batch, you pick one sentence, pass it through any encoder, get its representation and say it as an anchor. You again pass the same sentence, get its representation. That is what you call as positive. So this is your anchor and positive pair that you create. Now your question could be if you're passing the same sentence two times, how are the embeddings different? The thing that you should note over here is that the model is not in an eval state. I mean, the weights are not freezed. So we'll be doing back propagation to update these weights, which means the dropouts, everything is active right now inside this module. So just like in any standard training of transformers, there are random dropouts that you have for fully connected layers and also in attention probabilities. So for every input that you give in, dropout mask might get activated, which will result in a little different embedding for the same sentence. And that is exactly what you need because you know these are same. Now, if the representation is a little different, that is what you want to bang on and push the model to have these embeddings more closer to each other so that the dropouts doesn't really have an impact going forward when you represent both of them in the same semantic space. So that is how you create positive pairs. So implicitly you are doing augmentation and putting the augmented version of it at a vector level close to the anchor one. And the way you create negative samples is like you pick another sentence from the same batch, pass it, you get the embedding and this and this pair now creates a negative batch. So yeah, again, you have positive and negative pairs with respect to the anchor sentence. And that is what you need at the heart of it to train your representation learning system. So yeah, this is the crux of it that this paper proposes on the unsupervised sim CSE piece. So let's move forward and see the loss function. Yeah. So this is what the training objective of sim CSE looks like, wherein you want to maximize the numerator and minimize the denominator to make this value closer to one so that the overall loss tends to zero. So making numerator bigger means you want to have the hidden representation of ith sentence with a mask of zi and the hidden representation of the same ith sentence but with a different mask which is zi dash. Now you want these to be moving closer to each other in the semantic space whereas the denominator is about pushing the ith and jth which means all the remaining elements in the batch a little far away from each other. So that's what is written which is hizi which is a hidden representation of the ith sentence with a zi mask and the hidden representation of the jth sentence which is not the same sentence but the one that's there in the batch with its mask and yeah this is where you want to push them apart from each other and pull them towards each other so that way you will have this increasing this decreasing this overall increasing and this tending to zero which is what we what we want so in the standard transformers training, the dropout probability, which is P is set to 0.1, which is 10% of the random units are masked and are not used at any given iteration. Okay. So yeah, I mean, this is same as thinking about dropout noise as a data augmentation for learning the sentence embeddings. So they do experiment with various dropout probabilities ranging from zero to 0.5 to fixed point 0.1. Now fixed point 0.1 is nothing which means you have set a random seed let's say 42 and you use this every time you are you're creating a dropout mask which means if one sentence is sent to the transformers 
two times, you should see the same embedding because the same units were masked in both the settings. Whereas this point one is nothing but random 10% is masked in every iteration. This is where they see the peak where they use 10% as the dropout probability. Cool. So yeah, that was the idea that sim CSE for unsupervised learning brings on to the table. With this, we have an understanding of how sim CSE works. In the next video, I'll touch upon the paper which is CT that stands for semantic retuning with contrastive tension. We're done with this video. I'll meet you in the next one. In the meantime, do check out other videos in this series and share it with your friends to whosoever you think is interested. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.